la última plática de esta mañana, es Alejandro Álvarez de la Universidad de Pichitone, va a hablar de Topology of the Universe. Gracias. Invitación. Es una práctica. Sí, pues, eh, gracias por la invitación. Esta es una plática que va a desentonar un poco, porque, bueno, habrá espacios singulares que van a aparecer pero no es tanto una práctica de singularidades, pero este, sirve un poco de cultura general. El propósito más importante es celebrar los 60 años de Rebeca y aprovecho esta ocasión para este, agradecerle todo su apoyo y, y pues el ejemplo que nos ha dado a todos en México y mundialmente. Desde que yo era alumno aquí en México, sabíamos de él y teníamos un poco de miedo de que llegó. Pero ahora está muy tranquilo. Ha cambiado. Pero sí, tiene una gran intensidad y es un gran matemático y es un gusto estar aquí. Bueno, yo voy a hablar aquí sobre un tema. Perdón. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, I was just saying that the, it was a, an honor to be here celebrating a Pepe Sales 60th uh, birthday, and that this talk is not going to be about singularities or singularity theory or dynamical systems. So forget all that. There's going to be some singular spaces and there's going to be a lot of uh, topology. Hopefully not too much. Only towards the end, uh, we will see some algebraic topology. And we're reading it again. Uh, so take this as a cultural aside, and as a way of uh, winning your appetite for lunch. I see the preparations are already underway. So, okay, so let me start then. So, um, so here's an outline of the talk. I'll start by giving some definitions and very elementary properties. Then uh, we'll construct the notion of a classifying space uh, for commutativity. Then we'll do a few cohomology calculations. And then towards the end, I will talk about uh, bundle and a, a, a theory for a K theory that can be constructed uh, on these ideas. And at the very end, uh, a whole cohomology theory with a given loop space, which um, comes out of this construction. So this is a joint work with uh, Jose Manuel Gomez. That is the first part. The second part is joined with uh, John Lynn, uh, Ulrike Tillman, and uh, Jose Manuel Gomez, and based on earlier work with Fred Cohen and the Fox Student on the So now we're going to start with something very elementary. So, don't fall asleep just yet. So, uh, G is going to be a compact matrix group. Okay? So I like compact groups because, you know, algebraic Paul just could feel better with compact groups. <laughs> and uh, the examples we like are, for example, unitary, orthogonal, or symplectic. Okay? So these are groups of matrices. And we're going to come up with a, a very simple problem. So consider matrices <coughs> which commute, uh, pairwise. So CN of G is going to denote the, is going to denote the collection of all ordered entry voltages matrices, A1 to AN, such that they commute pairwise. Now if you look at commuting, uh, uh, an ordered commuting n-tuple, then they sit inside all the n-tuples. Okay? So uh, we say, well, it's a subset, but we can think of it as a subspace, and we can give it a topology of a subspace. So that's the topological space we would like to look at. Now here, uh, you know these uh, formulas of commutativity, they can be written down explicitly in terms of the entries in the matrices. So it's an al algebraic condition being imposed. So there's obviously uh, uh, some room for algebraic geometry in this, uh, in this uh, game. Our whole goal is not to use algebraic geometry, but to use the problem instead. Uh, okay, so uh, the basic problem you can ask here, the first problem, we're given a topological space. You know, we're given a space 
Well, it's very rarely going to be just one blob. A space is going to have many different blobs. Right? So the question you can ask is, how many blobs does the space have? In other words, how many blobs? So we're asking very precisely, if you consider the space of all these community intervals of matrices, uh, how many components do I get in this space? So um, this, this would be, you know, when you have a, a, an interval, two intervals in the same component, you're able to construct a path uh, of community intervals between them. That's the question. So this is a question in linear number. More generally, what can you say about the geometry and topology of these spaces? What is their input? So that's a general question. Turns out that the answer is very hard, and it's hard to do with complete answer. So um, we'll just kind of start a leisurely stroll into considering what the difficulties are. So uh, the first lemma tells you that uh, if every maximal abelian subgroup in your group G is connected, then uh, the ordered community intervals will be path connected. So here, um, the kind of group which will satisfy this will be something like unit. Okay. So think about unitary matrices and community matrices. And uh, this is the this is the one proof we're given in this talk. Uh, okay, suppose you have an order community interval. You can always construct the path from uh, the the interval constructing taking the identity. Obviously, if I take, I just take one in all the coordinates, these will commute pair box. Okay. So now, uh, how do we do that? Okay. So if we use this hypothesis that every maximal abelian subgroup is connected. So you, we use the uh, maximal abelian subgroup H, which contains A1 up to Am. And then you find paths in H, PI of P, from 1 to AI from each I. These will be paths in this abelian subgroup. Therefore, this, this, these paths will produce pairwise, and it gives you then a path in C and H. This is basic fact. It's very large. So it tells you then that uh, the Korean antipod theorem is always path connected. However, that turns out to be a, a good and a special thing. What about your other favorite matrix group, like OM? There's a problem. What if we ask this question for the problem matrices? Well, in this case, you can show that if m is greater than 2 to the n, then there are 2 to, two to the 2 to the n minus 1 connected components in the space of order to the n. So uh, what's really happening here is that uh, there are uh, elementary median groups uh, at the prime 2, so groups of a form like this. B1, 2, 3, to the K, which are not contained in, uh, in uh, maximal torus. So, so we have maximal abelian subgroups which are not connected. So this hypothesis is not satisfied. So, uh, so uh, this gives you an idea then that um, things can be very complicated at certain points. So let us uh, make a hypothesis that does away with these difficulties. Right? Our problem, we always want to do away with problems. So let's uh, denote the collection of all compact matrix groups, such as maximum of units of And uh, examples will be the unitary groups, we'll have the special unitary groups, and you'll also have the, the compact complexity groups, and all the problems. Okay, so um, let's, let's assume we have that condition. And SOE? SOE is a problem. Yeah. Even spin is a problem. For example, uh, spin 7, the, the commuting triples in spin 7 is not path connected. That appeared in the paper. Whitten's, uh, he claimed it was. So some, some people made it in the industry. Show that. And, and, and so what happens is that the, even if the space is connected and simply connected, you still have to Okay, now. Um, if you have a, a lead group, G, then you know that it acts on itself by conjugation, the so-called adjoint action. 
is a very nice action, very important action that um, we all like to consider. Now, I have a commuting interval. I conjugate this simultaneously. <coughs> if I do that, you see that these guys still commute, right? So, so I can uh, extend this definition for this action to the space of commuting interval or order commuting. And, uh, and we consider the order space. Now, um, parenthetically, uh, we're actually looking at a representation variety here. Secretly, what we have is that C energy is a space of homomorphism for the three abelian groups of rank A and G. And then when I divide out by a conjugation action, this is the space of representation. Now here we have a nice compact group, so we can divide out the smallest portion. This is really just the portion by G and this conjugation. Now it's a, a theorem in uh, geometry that says that uh, this space here can be solved as a modular space. Because the modular space of isomorphism classes of flat connections from principal G bundles over the end. So the end torus is the part of n copies of circle, n times. And the reason it appears there is because the fundamental group of this is that the and uh, so now we, the, the, we have here this uh, mass, this orbit space. Now this is very far from being a, uh, a, a uh, vibration, or this action is very far from being free from this being a principal g bar. But it's very far from that because uh, there are a lot of stable options. Uh, even for the, just for the adverb action, the stable options are quite interesting. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of algebra geometry, so it's kind of, it's cross stack. Okay, so what can we say about that? So, uh, when you study an action in topology, uh, you study stabilizers, right? Stabilizers, remember what those are, stabilizer of an action would be the Let's look at the stabilizers. Now, um, well, if you have a matrix, if you think of a matrix, then its uh, centralizer is defined as a set of all matrices which are neutral. So if you have, the other so if you have a, an integral of community of matrices, then its stabilizer under the action is simply an intersection of the stabilizer. Of the centralizers of each of Now this is true if I took, so here I'm taking C n of G, and this is the size G of the N. So I take an n tuple here. Now if I took this n tuple, an arbitrary n tuple here, then I'd be considering the problem of understanding the intersections of the centralizers of arbitrary matrix. That can be quite complicated because the centralizers can vary in the right It's not necessarily that good uh, control. But we're saying here, the key fact here, that if you have a community interval, then uh, the stabilizer is in fact connected and contains a maximal torus for the, for the compact G. So uh, if, when we say here, the action has connected maximal length So uh, let me just recall. Maximum torus is just a group which is a product of circles, uh, and the, the largest possible n uh, for a product of circles is going to be g, and these are going to up the conjugation for the theory of compact theory. So, uh, so this is a nice fact for, uh, uh, so, if, so if the g sits in our m and p, uh, groups where all the maximum abelian subgroups are connected, then the stabilizers for this action are very connected and have maximum. Okay. So now, um, so given a, uh, this maximal torus, we can look at its normalizer. 
and its portion uh, state, its portion group, its W, happens to be a finite. Just yet. 
So, okay, this gives you an idea that we can get some control. But all the problems, there are very severe problems occurring if you look at prime speeds which divide the order of the violence. So, from the point of view of public engineering, uh, these spaces are extremely singular at the primes dividing the order of the violence. So, even though UAM, for example, you look at its cohomology, the salt portion three, which is green plus to be, uh, the communion integrals in UM will contain uh, torsion for all the primes dividing the order of sigma n. So it's quite And the only complete ca calculation uh, which is known is for SP2, the communion integral of SP2, which has extensive amounts of uh, SP2. Okay. So, uh, well, let's keep on, you know. What the heck? Let's say. Uh, okay, so this is the, uh, the big picture. Topology lights, big picture. Uh, what does that mean? So if you have a space and you can't say almost anything about it, in this case is CN or G, well, they say, well, why are you just looking at one space? That's very bad. Very bad. You want it. Look at all of them at the same time. So if you can't solve your problem, make it into a bigger problem. And then, if you say something about the bigger problem, you might have said something about the original problem. But if not, it doesn't matter because you're doing higher level mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it's a good thing. So, you say, oh, take these community and two poles, or if you have two poles, we're all in. And I say, what can I do with it? I want to consider them all at the same time. Okay. So, uh, algebraic topology has a machine, has machines, I should say, that do this for you. Uh, extremely efficient, and um, the things that fit together in, in ways, in kind of surprising ways, that uh, measure um, will measure the original phenomena, perhaps in a slightly more abstract way. So, uh, so here we pose the question: Well, what can we do with all the clean order clean integrals uh, of, of a compact group G of a group of matrices? Okay. So, uh, okay. So, as everything in, in topology, you have to. Finite level, we recognize these pieces to be glued together in a certain way. And a little bit of um, but this is building something which um, has more, uh, more structure. So, here then uh, our logo is well, become G should encapsulate all the information about the meaning of G. Can we make this explicit? Okay, so the first thing, uh, the first thing is well, as I said before, uh, in topology, we like to look at compact groups. We don't um, we don't um, like non-compact groups. They're very complicated, right? So uh, we, we very much like something like group M, but we're, we're kind of afraid of that sort of thing. However, from the point of view of topology, these two spaces are are um, not a big deal. From the point of view of topology. These two spaces are all totally equal. It's uh, from the Yumasawa decomposition and the branch and that's one. So for us, the compact groups is the normal one to be. So our principle is always going to compact with UK. So now the question here is if I if I have a community entity, a community entity in M and a community entity in GLM, uh, well, can I compare these? There are many, many more interesting than there are over here. Right? So is there a, a way of comparing these two? So this is a problem in topology. It's a delicate problem. You have to construct a trajectory of homotopy equivalence to keep this community in its non-trivial fact. But there is, in fact, a, such a homotopy equivalence. For the infinite, for the non-compact group, 
is the same as the classifying space for the compact. So, so the, the statement is, given a real or complex reductive algebraic group with maximal compact solute K, then we've been shown that the inclusion map induces an algebraic group. So then we're in a very good situation, because all this phenomenon we're going to be looking at, we can always reduce the maximal complex. Okay, now, we can now get into, so now we reduce ourselves to compact groups, and um, we'd like to understand uh, our space, uh, you know, kind of combinatorial. It's always, uh, it's always good to have uh, combinatorial models for your uh, spaces. You have an infinite dimensional space, by the way. You come to G, is an infinite dimensional space. And uh, you want to be able to describe it in terms of pieces which are more understandable. Okay. Now, there's some obvious candidates here. There's the, uh, you can consider all the maximal chloride and their intersections. And uh, decology can be described in terms of uh, this topological concept. So it's not a, just a discrete object. There's some topology involved. Uh, here's an example. If I take SU2, the space of all maximal chloride G is homeomorphic to G modulo the normalizer. Oh, it's all maximal chloride by okay. Now, um, the, the normalizer, so here T is a circle. Uh, the normalizer of T is an extension of the circle by a Z mod 2. And this portion here is G. Sensu 2 mod the circle mod Z mod 2, and that's just RB. So we can see there's SU2. Remember that SU2 is secret in the three sphere. And it's, and if the this part of this case is the circle, mm -hmm. and so we have is S3 modulo the circle, and that's S2, and then you have the action of the vial group, which is Z mod 2 in this case. And that is just the inhibitor. Okay, so this is what this post looks like. You have a singular point which corresponds to the uh, the center. Right. Where any two maximal chloride in SU2 intersect like this. You understand like that? So that's uh, that's uh, and not the rest of just. Okay, well, without getting into details, uh, it, it can in fact be reduced to a homotopy theoretical construction involving a discrete category. And in fact, in this work, it is always expressed uh, this classifying space as a, a generalized homotopy uh, push-up. So we call it a homotopy co-limit, which we're not going to talk about, certainly not going to talk about here, but it's a, a generalization of a, a push-up in the homotopy category. So in this case, it's very simple. You look at these two, uh, these are RP2 plus RP infinity, the projective spaces, RP infinity again. Here you have a bundle, here you have S2 plus CP infinity. These have Z mod 2 actions induced by the wild group. The natural action is Z mod 2 of both of these, and you divide by So you take this and you, 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 you construct the picture, the whole of the picture out of that. Okay, now, uh, you can use a minor and power sequence. And you can understand the many numbers of this space. And here you see, um, so this is the case of SU2. And more generally, you have, a, you have a formula like this. So this is the explicit version of this over here. Now why is this calculation interesting? Well, the, the, so we call this a classifying space for commutativity because in topology, there's the notion of classifying space so what does that correspond to? So if I'm taking these guys and gluing them all together to get the beat column of G. However, long ago it was seen that if I took all took all angles and I glued these together, I have got a model for building this uh, test like this. And here we have natural conclusion here. So you have a natural map here. So it's early. Actually, the community, the public, the community, has a natural map in the standard test. Now this is, this we'll see, right, right. a lot of times there are 
This, uh, this is a classifying space. This is a classifying space for principal people. This is a classifying space for women on bus. But the, um, the point here is that uh, we can understand B of SU2. B of SU2 is just, um, what do you call it, the infinite culture unit. Uh, and from the point of view of, of cohomology, the Betty numbers, beta K of SU2, of BSU2, is going to be equal to 1. If k is coming to 0 mod 4, it's going to be equal to 0 mod 4. Right? Because the homology of BSU2 is a polynomial algebra on the second uh, chain class. So, uh, okay, now notice from here that there's a 2. A 2. Flash of 2. So it's a new class. The community is picking up an additional class. In, in, in dimensions congruent to zero. So something is happening here. And as you know, uh, the, the theory, the classical theory, the cohomology of the classifying space, you have these characteristic classes that plug it in well. Um, so this is the first sign that maybe there's something about the bundles that um, is here. Okay? So we'll move on. That's cohomology. Okay, uh, so, so again, if you compute the cohomology or the bedding number of a space, say I compute a third bedding number of that space, you'll be criticized for that. Why don't you do all? Do all the bedding numbers. But it's an infinite dimensional space. I don't care. Go back and get them all. Well, gee, it's hard. It's even hard to write them. But uh, no, okay, we, we come up with something called a concurrency, which can be an actual infinite series. You put in all the many numbers. By the way, this is supposed to be a, uh, there's still the students in the audience. Mature mathematicians, obviously, they know that. So we, we, put, we put these things here all together into one series. And we say, well, okay, try to compute the one Correa series for the classifying space for community for the UK. So, so uh, that's a problem. So try to do that. And the, um, the motivation is, well, what's, what's true in the classical situation here? Say if I take B to N here, and I compute it, it's, uh, so if I take X to be equal to B to N, then Dx of B is equal to 1 over the product of 1 minus B to the 2 times. So just the chair class. Yeah. So it's a polynomial algebra on the universal chair class. So that's at the that's the kind of uh, non the general situation of the the situation. Now we're saying what would be the answer in this form for uh, the medium? Okay, so it turns out to be a problem in the um, uh, the formula which I, I showed before. These formulas here are telling us that the, um, you have to deal with a theory of invariance, two invariants taken simultaneously. So here you're dividing up by the angle action in two variables. So um, we have to build in uh, invariant theory uh, in two different places. So uh, algebraically, the kind of problem you'll be facing is uh, something like this. Suppose I have a polynomial algebra N generators, and another polynomial algebra on N generators. And now uh, the symmetric group acts here by commuting these generators, and the symmetric group acts here by commuting these generators. So now I can set task for what are the variants of the diagonal. And that's uh, it's like multi variable double octave. Because uh, if I do this PN, sigma N, then I get a very nice uh, result of fundamental result of the logic so that this is the polynomial algebra of the symmetric invariant. But here it's much more complicated. 
it's, it's the computing of this metric. Uh, um, okay. We care about symmetric group if that's what which appears to be. Okay, well, of course, there are people who worked on this. The algebraics, I, I like to say, they, they were very hard. They were much harder than any of us. They're always computing and doing these answers. So you just have to go into the thing. You can find answers to everything. So, um, okay, in this case, you define something called the major index. So, so W is going to be a permutation, and we define its major index. MAJ of W, you can find that the sum of the i's is that WI is greater than WI plus 1. That's an invariant. And now the progress series we're looking for is exactly this. Here you take the sum of our permutations of T to 2 times the, the major index of W plus the major index of W to minus 1. And, and the quotient is identical to the and uh, this can be broken down, so it can be understood uh, uh, topologically. And this numerator, in fact, represents the cohomology of this uh, quotient. And again, it's the diagonal quotient of these. Um, these are the uh, fragments. And this, these things here represent the usual shape. So, um, so really what we're saying here, you know, we have this map over here. We have the map. What that's representing is that the cohomology of this guy is in fact a finitely generated module over the cohomology of this guy. And uh, the basis as a module is given by this, this guy here. So this is a very good situation in community algebra. So there's a little bit of community algebra. We don't want to gauge that here. Um, so now, you say, well, why did you choose an N, right? Why didn't you do all N? Okay, let's do all N. What does that mean? Let's do, take N go to infinity. So, I can take N go to infinity here, and I get the infinite unitary root, and it's not like this. We can do the direct image of a cold image, and of course, a community entity point, you can apply the cold image. So now, um, now what's apparent from these formulas is that these are very complicated pieces. The cohomology of these has very complicated relations, and it's very far from being common. But now if you take the limit, you actually have an isomorphism of algebra. So now we have actually usually work the cohomology, and this is rational cohomology. You get a polynomial ring on generators indexed by pairs. A D will be is greater than zero. So, uh, it's, so it's polynomial in the limit, and each quotient is mapped onto each of the as a finite one with a bunch of relations. Uh, and, and of course, your, your topologist would ask you, well, why are you doing this over the rationals, not over the inches? And the answer is because I can't. Right? But so, uh, there'll be, 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 be portion, and all the primes divided in order of the symmetric group. So, so if you do this, you try to do this computation at a finite field. So that's the initial thing. This should be the problem. Okay, so now, question here. What does this space classify? What does it classify? And that, that's interesting. It gives you a, a, a new uh, well, a new or kind of model um, definition. So here we have principal G bundles, okay? So uh, the notion we, we come up with here is that of transitionally commutative commutation. So here's the definition. So, so suppose I have a finite complex X in a principal G bundle over it. We said it's transitionally commutative if there exists an open cover of X such that the bundle is trivial, so we have a trivialization. And the group generated by the um, intercept the transition functions is a group. Functions. That's what you mean. Here, the Vigoroid base zero the transition functions, and this one for all these distances, for which x is in the Vy function. So, this is a, a kind of condition on the principle of the mm -hmm. It's a condition of commutativity at the level of the principle one. Okay, so let's keep on uh, playing with this. 
Well, you want to define an equivalence notion of, of transitioning division uh, bundles that you do in global theory. So uh, what, you, what you do is that you draw up one dimension higher, that you take a lid and then you can fill them, okay? you take a principal G bundle, and uh, you want this one to be transitioning commutative, and that on, on each of those lids, it restricts to the two So this is the notion of transitionally commutative isomorphic transitionally commutative bundle. And you need all the words, otherwise it wouldn't make that much uh, sense. Okay, and the basic uh, basic result in the paper we um, uh, say was that given a finite complex, the transition commutative equivalence classes of transition commutative principal G bundles are in one to one correspondence with homotopy classes of maps for X to G from G. So and, and this is really um, one of the nice things in, in, in the algebraic topology is when you can characterize a certain geometric construction just in terms of homotopy. Basic, um, the beautiful uh, uh, theories about the, uh, about the, uh, uh, you know, the principal bundles, tangent bundles, right? So here we're seeing then that the D-Pong G plays the role of the classified space for the, the, the principal region. So it's saying, well, okay, it's classifying this structure. So now um, those are principal bundles, but everyone really likes vector. Principal bundles, most people don't know what they are. So, why don't we go to vector bundles? So, we take a complex vector bundle. We'll say that it's transitioning commutative with the corresponding frame bundle under a fixed transition metric is transitioning commutative. And now we can consider the, the set of transitioning commutative isomorphism classes of vector bundles or X, which are transitioning commutative. This forms a monoid under the direction of vector bundle. So just like the normal vector bundle, this notion gives you a monoid. Okay. So now uh, you say, well, if I could do it with the other, with, the, with these traditional bundles, the traditional vector bundles, can I do it with transitional commutative vector bundles? Can I do what? Well, can I create a polytrope? So um, that's, uh, well, we define the commutative K theory of X has a Grothendieck group recently deceased. Okay, Grothendieck, so it's good to have his hands here. Has he been mentioned before in this talk? In this uh, summer school? Yes. Okay, thank uh, you. So uh, the Grothendieck group associated with that monomer. And then the basic result here is that uh, this commutative K theory, as you call it, is a little bit correspondence with homotopy classes of maps. X and Z cross E So, so, uh, so you say, well, is this some kind of accident? Is, uh, what's special about P of U? You say, well, then you get into um, you get into uh, home. So people in algebraic topology have studied uh, these targets of, uh, which classify uh, things of this kind, and uh, the basic. Um, the basic uh, strategy is to try to prove that these spaces have a special structure, that they satisfy something that makes them a, uh, a spectrum that represents a, uh, a generalized cohomology. So the natural question here, is this a generalized cohomology theory? Is B comma U a spectrum representing a generalized cohomology Just like B U here, the so-called unitary spectrum, is, uh, represents complex spaces. So if I want to study vector bundles over a space, I just have to study homotopy classes and maps. And they have all sorts of nice things about, about that uh, which follow from that structure. So that's one of the basic facts about the thing. So um, that was like our conjecture. And then in the second part of this, which I'm going to read really soon, uh, it is a joint work with Jose Gomez, who really killed him, and John Lane. We were able to show that, in fact, this space is a new So what is that? It's an it's an infinity uh, space that's all sorts of nice things, nice structure. So um, so what you get out of this is that um, 
And the proof is that, you know, and this is techniques for home computer here, which you don't want to know about. But one of the key things is that it connects to this infinite loop space. Now this infinite loop space is, is the one constructed from the infinite symmetric groups. And its homotopy groups are the stable homotopy groups of speech. So this spectrum, in fact, combines K theory and stable homotopy. That's, that's why it's, uh, it's rather complicated. Okay, so now uh, we have the basic fact that the community of K theory is represented by the infinite loop space, and therefore it is a zero term in the generalized homology group. So, um, if you haven't understood any of this, all that you could say is, well, there's a new homology theory called communicate theory, which is built out of these spaces, the uh, the And uh, they say, well, do I get anything new? Well, it's interesting that you can show that uh, topological K theory splits off of communicate theory. It's always, actually always included there. And uh, communicate K theory for the spheres is the same as the classical K theory, but the community K theory of S4 is different. And remember that characteristic class that appeared there? So the next one. That's the language character. So that's a favorable situation. Now, of course, now you have all this friends will ask you, well, why just commuting elements? Why don't you consider no elements, right? And so yes, in fact, connecting this to some previous work with, with uh, Fred and Enrique. Or sort of. Hmm? Or sort of. Or sort of. Yeah. Here we can do it for local. So uh, you can in fact use the descending central series of the three groups to construct the spaces, spaces BQG which form a filtration. And uh, the first one is the one we've been talking about. But there's an infinite family impact. So and these are kind of stratified by local class. And again you can talk about transitioning local so you ask for the subgroups generated and the position of the to be a, a local impact. And the theorem here is that if I take these classical groups, SU, USO, SUO, then these spaces form a filtration by all infinite group spaces, and what we have now is a filtration by uh, infinite group spaces, and we'll give rise to uh, So, so uh, um, I guess what this shows you is starting out from matrices of community, something that you really thought you would show, you come up with something that <coughs> no one <coughs> can really understand. So that's a unique mathematics. A simple definition can have a huge amount of content in all of those Complex manifolds, which is transitionally abelian. And you say something in the context of the from, from the complex viewpoint, from a differential geometric viewpoint, but the geometric point would be the geometric interpretation of yeah. the abelian. Yeah, I mean, the yeah, yeah. 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 Differential geometry. You don't know anything. I don't know. Okay. So, you, you said that your community K theory is the zero degree of a generalized cosmology. Do, do you expect to have some type of thought periodicity? We, we, we can't have thought periodicity in the classical sense because that's it with the spheres. It's so long. So, you might have like a periodicity element which you have to invert. And then you'd see something which is left. But you, yeah, you can't have the property. And the two that appears in this case, uh, this new characteristic, like you don't have an idea of the geometric meaning. Uh, I, I don't have a. Uh, For SU2. Yeah. yeah. You know, we can construct that cobalt. <coughs> but see, the thing is, with spheres, you can always uh, find a, a, um, an atlas where it's. Um, which is the mission community. Do the thing is that the, the, there's more than one lifting. What we see here is that there's, you know, the real weak factoring the map from the sphere into B, we got CU, BU is classifying to B commune, right? 
But there's it can factor in data for it. So that kind of a lot of more questions or yeah. Do you have an example for which all these community K theories should manage for a specific space? It's not even a, a, a preprint. Yeah. Well, I guess it's our preprint, but I'm not the archivist. Another question? Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between the 